Hello everyone, uh, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, and I am covering an article, Conservatives Abandon the Tea Party Movement. And uh, we just looked at the little poll here where it said, uh, Fox News poll, it says, Fruitless mix of racism, conspiracy theories is 76% of what the Tea Party Movement is about. Racism and conspiracy theories. It says it's modern warfare online poll time again while most polls on the internet that are labeled quote unscientific usually fade into obscurity even before the, all the votes are tallied every now and then one becomes a may may or a maim uh thursday morning a wonkat blog post titled fox news poll yes we are insanely racist crazy people made it onto Diggs' recommendation list the foxnews.com poll asked quote what do you think about the tea, uh, what do you think the Tea Party movement is about? And it says uh, how to define the Tea Party movement was nearly as big an big an issue last week at the National Tea Party Convention as the political issues discussed uh, from government fiscal responsibility to greater accountability of public officials. Some participants drew cheers for raising more controversial topics such as President Obama's nationality. Uh, but others argue that those points were at best politically unproductive. Meghan McCain uh, went further on Monday and called segments of the movement racist. So, yeah, that's right. Uh, it was John McCain's daughter that injected race uh, into this issue, along with Marvel Comics, uh, who had Captain America with a black IRS agent uh, go into a tea party. And... Uh, had basically racist overtones saying that uh, they're a bunch of white supremacists. It says, uh, one choice that stands out is, quote, fruitless mix of racism, conspiracy theories, which hopefully wasn't word worded to imply that there could be a potentially fruitful mix of the two. Uh, Wong Kent's Jim Newell cracked, what is it about it, the fruitless, though? Uh, racism and conspiracy theories have put the Republicans in great shape for 2010. If that's fruitless, then consider these teabaggers fruit uh, fruity. When Wonkat wrote the poll up Wednesday late afternoon, there were 92,876 votes tallied, with 65% opting for fruitless mix and 23% saying small government responsibility, only 10% selecting uh, voicing outrage at out-of-touch politicians. Um, it said, oddly enough, the poll says 1% selected other, which puts the total at 101% for the sometimes mathematically challenged network. At about an hour before noon on Thursday, 163,793 votes at the Fox poll put the fruitless mix even further top. Conservatives are complaining that uh, Reddit or re-edit loonies hijack Fox News poll while Democrat underground members uh, chortle at the fun results they helped elicit. Says last October, Raw Story reported using emails, community sites, political blogs, and tweets, conservatives have mounted a strike to win an online NPR poll on the war between the White House and Fox News. The 2009 NPR poll asked in White House uh, versus Fox News War of the Words, uh, who gets your vote? Conservatives bragged in tweets that they were helping to spin the poll back in favor of Fox while liberals fought on behalf of the Obama White House. Um, that's kind of, you know says uh, a more scientific poll released on Thursday conducted by Washington Post and ABC News shows that, quote, few Americans say they know much about the Tea Party movement, which emerged last year and attracted voters angry at government uh, they thought was spending recklessly and overstepping its constitutional power. Uh, but nearly two-thirds of the those polled uh, say they know just some, very little about or nothing about what the Tea Party movement stands for. About one in eight says they know a great deal and about the positions of the Tea Party groups, but the lack of information does not erase the appeal. About 45% of all Americans say they agree at least somewhat with Tea Party leaders on issues including majorities of Republicans and independents. And it says the new poll shows Republicans divided about the Tea Party movement, which threatens to cause a rift in the lead up to November's midterm elections, which it really doesn't. This is the whole point that I'm trying to say. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. Just let it go, guys. Just let it go. Don't be a sheep. You don't have to associate yourself with a stupid-ass uh, globalist fascist party, whether it's Democrats or Republicans. You don't have to associate yourself what is, with what is or what was a grassroots movement and is now sucked into the corporate uh, pro-neocon agenda, right? 
you don't have to be a part of that. You can just say, I'm done with you, you know, and then you just, all the swells of numbers that went out will no longer go out, and then they can just say, oh, and then they'll say, oh, the Republicans are losing support. They'll be like, okay, yeah, what about the Libertarians, you know, or what about the Socialist Party even? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm more Libertarian myself, but, you know, like I said, I'd rather have a Socialist than a Democrat, and I'd rather have a libertarian than a republican said so two-thirds of those calling themselves strong republicans view the movement favorably right and compared with 33 percent among not very strong republicans overall opinion is about evenly split with 35 percent of all americans holding favorable views of the movement and 40 percent unfavorable a quarter expressed no opinion uh, nearly 6 in 10 Democrats have unfavorable views while independents are split. The new poll offers a portrait of Tea Party supporters as overwhelmingly white, mostly conservatives, and generally disapproving of Obama. And uh, so that's how, it, that's how it works. This is how this divide-and-conquer strategy works. And I'm not talking about just regular Republican Democrat. Like I said, I'm talking about the federal government, our republic, being hijacked in general. And uh, to do that, they need a divide-and-conquer strategy. And playing off left against the right is the way they do it. And uh, racism, right? You can use race to divide people. You can use class warfare, race warfare, political uh, party affiliation warfare. Oh, they're just playing politics. This is, you know, they're just being uh, partisan and whatnot. So, I mean, but it is your duty, you know. It is your duty to uh, to resist the growing federal government. And it's, you know, Thomas Jefferson, you can't see it over here, but it says, uh, Thomas Jefferson was quoted saying, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. And that's what we're doing. And so now they have pegged us in a quarter where if you are resisting, if you were, you know, resisting the growing federal government and the spending and all that, then, of course, they put the old puppet, Obama, in there, um, who isn't even fully African-American and who could quite possibly not even be a U.S. citizen, which is a pretty big deal, right? Um, and they put him in there, the corporate, you know, package rolled out on a little dolly, and uh, he just speaks, they plug him in, and, and he starts speaking off the teleprompter. Uh, even Snowmageddon, what he said, you know, I think that was straight up from, you know, intelligence. I don't even think he said that, uh, you know, from his heart, from his own mind, the Snowmageddon. And, uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he doesn't represent liberalism. He doesn't represent anything. He just is a talking head for these global elites, just like Bush was, and just like Palin is, and whoever the future Republican fascists uh, will have in, in control of our federal government, right? So, so it's all, so they, they bring out uh, Obama, and then what does he do? He divides people so that anything that he proposes, which is going to be a globalist agenda, and they use the left cover of being liberal, oh, healthcare, oh, global tax, oh, you got to have uh, pay spies and census at GPS veterans' houses, and oh, we got to have a youth brigade, and it's all in the name of being liberal, right? And um, so they use that left cover when really he's just a puppet. And so it divides people, especially because he's, what, he's quote, black, right, even though he's not fully black. They used that race issue, and they knew that it would help divide us in a time where we really, in a sense, needed to be somewhat united, not a fascist united, but a real united in, in, in the sense that we respect liberty. There's one thing that we respect, all of us, is that um, we respect liberty. And so you have comments uh, like this where it says, uh, uh, it says, uh, stupid cunt, whatever, you know, t talking about Palin. And there's those like Glenn Beck, the real Tea Party members, ain't buying this crap. I guess we need the quote, this ain't the Tea Party movement now. So that's a good point that uh, the big O C made, uh, the big C made, that, you know, just come up with your own name for the movement because it's been hijacked, you know. Like a funk doctor said, this is like that moment that your parents start using your favorite buzzword in order to kill it. When your mom says those shoes are fat, it's officially a dead word. And that's their aim with this move, is to kill the part Tea Party by association. So, and another reason to just abandon ship in this whole Tea Party movement is because you're being called a teabagger. I don't know if you like that. I, I certainly wouldn't. But people are referring to people in that movement as teabaggers. They think that we call ourselves teabaggers now, like it originated from the Tea Party movement itself. No, that was disinfo. So uh, thank you, everybody, for checking this out.